Hello, Salvadoran Warrior here, and today I'm here to talk about a, another class mod character. Today, I'll be talking about the Lamia, a certain character that is really good in healing and stress healing, and if the team's pushed against the wall, she has a transformation gimmick where she turns into a beautiful snake girl. That can do huge damage if the enemy is blighted. She can even throw blight or stun the enemy. So, there's also a few other things that she can do too. It's only that one thing. But her main goal is to stress, heal, heal, and in her creature form, just fucking wreck. <laughs> Anyways, uh, before we continue, I like to say... I know I've been gone for quite some time, you know, things have gotten a little busy, so some of these videos may come out really slow, so bear with me, and if you're still here, let's get started. So the Lamia is a character with decent stats and decent resistances. Um, first let's talk about the base stats. Um, she has decent HP um, Dodge is also pretty interesting. It's a little higher um, And of course her um, speed is pretty high um, Without the trinkets, she's still really fast. So of course She's going to be going first sometimes second depending on who's in your team um, As for her crits her crits are just really 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 good 10% so that is something with trinkets it's of course 4% higher but without the trinket it's just natural 10 so she can do crit now you're wondering what does a healer need crit for well it's all related to her transformation gimmick but her heals are pretty good too but I'll get to that later for now her crit is something else but her speed is probably something that should just catch your eye. Right next to her um, dodges too. A decent 25. But I'll also get to that later. Because it gets doubled um, later. I'll talk about the numbers. But for now, base stats, pretty decent. Her resistances, however, is interesting. Because she has 80% chance to get stunned. She has an 80% chance to get moved around, bled. Her debuff is a little high. She can disarm traps decently, but she can't be blinded. It's 120% resistance, which is, of course, interesting. Death blow, however, it's, it's just the same with every um, character in the Darkest Dungeon. They're always going to have death blow at 67 and she can easily get hit with a disease. So she's a very fragile lady when it comes to diseases, but that's fine. Um, other than that, you know, resistances, the things that you gotta like keep an eye out on is the blight, so don't worry about it. But stun and everything else can happen. So there you go. <laughs> Um, with that aside, I just want to jump into her combat skills. Uh, her combat skills are probably like the most unique thing in this class character. She can pretty much, like I said in the beginning of the video, heal, stress, heal, and damage the team, uh, damage the enemy. So, with that aside, let's get started on her combat skills. First, I'm going to talk about her human abilities. And her first human ability is the Cleansing Tide. The Cleansing Tide is a healing ability that can heal for 6 to 8 and can cure um, Blight and Bleed at the same time. This can only be used in positions 3 to 4. Really, really good heal. And we're starting off strong with this review. I love this because there's going to be moments where your team will be hit with Bleeds and Blights. And you won't know what to do. Thankfully, here comes the Lamia with the Cleansing Tide. Really, really good stuff. 
you won't even need band-aids or you know the antidotes um, to cure those type of um, damage over time effects all you need is this and you're good however I still recommend you take those bandages and antidotes because you never know man you might get hit with trap get hit with those things might want to use the bandages to get treasure it's still really important but you know what I mean you'll be saving items for something else thanks to the cleansing time so moving on to her next human ability her next human ability is this one it can be um it's a an ability that can stress heal for six points and she can also do this to herself she can also cure horror um, this can be used in positions three to four now um, it doesn't say it in this um, description but in the workshop page of the Lamia it tells you that it has a 75% chance to cure horror so it's not completely guaranteed but it's something you want to keep an eye out and why horror well, it has to do with her transformation gimmick. Um, but I'll talk about that later. For now, um, stress heal at 6 is decent. It's the same with the Crusader stress heal. But not as awesome as the Jester stress heal. But with some trinkets, you can make that ability slightly stronger. So don't fret. There's always a chance to um, improve. So... There you go. Um, really good ability. The last uh, human ability is Allure. Allure is an ability that can be used in positions 3 to 4 and can hit any position on the enemy side. Its accuracy is 120. Damage mod. Well, it won't be doing damage. No real do crit. However, if the enemy is guarded, it will bypass that and it will pull them forward. Once they're hit with a lure, they have a um, debuff of negative 20 dodge, can't be guarded, and will receive 8% of crits. It also breaks guard too. This move is really, 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 really good. If you see someone being protected, you can use this and you break their guard. You can even premature it, so if the enemy tries guarding, it won't happen, and they wasted their turn. It's a really good move, and since it pulls them forward, you can also disrupt their positions too, which is really, 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 really good. Which reminds me, when this character transforms to her snake ability, she will be moving around in different positions, so please be aware of that small fact you should also be aware of the next ability the veil now when she turns into beast mode um she gets a 20 plus um dodge and five more points in speed however when her allies witnesses this they will gain three points of horror and it will go on for four rounds yeah, this is where um, that stress heal comes in because when you turn back as a human, you can just sing their songs away and, you know, they will forget that they got inflicted with horror. But like I said, 75% chance. If you got the chance to turn back into a beast, I mean, if you got the chance to go from beast to human, uh, you get a debuff where you, you where you lose negative 10 dodge and you lose one point of speed but hey your allies they will gain a negative three points of heal stress heal i mean this is something you gotta consider and if you look at her dodge numbers you combine 20 points of dodge to her natural stat of dodge you're looking at 45 dodge which is way too powerful but 
it is also fine because you know darkest dungeon <laughs> so what happens when you're in beast mode what abilities do you get so the first one is the petrifying gaze petrifying gaze is an ability to get that can only be used three times and can be used in any positions and is an AoE attack that hits from positions 1 to 3. It's an range ability that has an accuracy of 115. It, it's really weak because of the negative 90% dodge, I mean, negative 90% damage, and doesn't even crit because it's at the negative 3%. But it stuns and on hit gives the enemy a negative 25 dodge and negative 5 points of speed really good stuff and can shuffle yourself around in different positions um it, it's usually random where you might be um shuffled around but at the same time this move is really 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 good just in case you want someone stunned real badly thankfully there's no negative um, like the Yelps that the Hellion has. Because for the Hellion, she can stun pretty good against two enemies. I just didn't like that idea that her um, her debuff is on damage. Thankfully, there is no debuff for this ability. The only thing that you get is a shuffle. Now, I'll talk about the strats on... I'll talk about the strats about this character later. For now, this is something that's really, really good and might consider using. Um, the next beast-like ability is Hiss. Hiss is, an, is an, uh, an ability that can be used in positions 1, 2, and 3, and it is an AoE hit on the enemy side on positions 1 and 2. It's a melee ability and it shuffles her three spaces back. The accuracy numbers are 115, damage mod 75, so it won't do that much damage, nor will it crit, but the blight is really, really powerful. Seven points of blight for three rounds. Really, really good, and on hit, debuffs the enemy on negative 20% of protection. This is really good. You can weaken the enemy with this and you can just watch them just struggle. I know it's only it's only hitting the front row, but that's okay. Sometimes their front row has the most annoying enemies that has like ridiculous amount of protection. So if you want to remove that, this is it right here. With that aside, I super recommend this ability. And if you're running a team that uses um, light abilities, you can combine this and make it even stronger for more blight damage. Really, really, really good stuff. Highly recommend you use whenever you get the chance. However, the one ability that you're probably going to be spamming a lot is this one. The last beast like ability is called slither slither is an ability that can be used in positions two three and four and can hit any positions on the enemy side melee ability that can pull her three positions forward so she's going to be in positions one as soon as she does this ability the accuracy numbers is 115 the crit is at 11 percent and if the enemy is blighted or stunned will do 75% of damage and on hit she buffs herself by 20 more points of dodge so you know how you turn into a beast you get 45% I mean 45 points of dodge and then you slither and you hit you get 20 more points ending it with 65 dodge that my friend is way too powerful this move is really good, but the drawback is that you're stressing out your team, you inflict horror on your team, 
And as they're sitting there, stunned by her beauty, <laughs> you're here just doing all the crazy damage. Like I said, this ability is only should only should be used if your backs are against the wall or you just don't care. <laughs> this move is really good. Overall, her combat abilities really really excellent. Really really excellent. Really really good. I love it. I love it. I love everything about the human part and I love everything about the beast part. Um not a lot of love goes into the transformation characters. I get they're just gimmicks and everything, but um I don't care. I see potential in transformation characters. And I feel like they could be really, really good if they're run with the right team compositions. But like I said, I'll talk about that later. Let's talk about her camping skills. Now, like most mod characters, they come with three generic camping abilities. But these are the four unique camping skills that you're probably going to be using. And if you don't know which one's the best, I'll help you with that. The first one is Immodest Vanity. It's a time cost one, and on the self only, cures herself of negative 30 stress. Um, all companions, however, receive five points of stress and has a 33% chance of getting five more points of stress in total of 10 if it happens. It's a time cost one. And, and you know what, that heal, healing your, your stress heal for 30 points is really, really good. And since it's cheap, why not? So what if the team gets five points of stress? Who cares? I say do it anyway, if you're in that position. The next one should help out the team. Lamprey's Kiss is a time cost to and on one companion can remove blight and a disease however they will be inflicted with plus 15 more points of stress now that may be bad but this is one of those scenarios where if you don't want to be stuck with disease and you know that disease is hurting your stats use this kiss and that disease should just go away they'll be they'll be stressed out but they're gonna be thankful they don't have like something like the red plague or you know leprosy or some sexual disease they don't have to deal with that so it's really good and it's cheap time cost too you can't beat that now the next camping skill is soothing presence Soothing Presence is a time cost for and all companions only will stress heal them for 10 points and they get 20% of stress resistance. This lasts for four battles. This one's pretty good. Um, for negative 10, it's, it's okay. You know, I'm fine with that. Uh, time cost four, however, is kind of expensive for just two abilities. If um, this um, camping skill had an extra ability, I'd have been totally fine with the time cost. But eh, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. This is this is it right here. It's okay. I would still do it anyway, because stress healing is stress healing. The last camping skill is Stock Prey. It's a time cost three and on self has a negative 10% chance of a party surprise with a plus 30% chance of a monster surprise. This lasts for four battles. Uh, it's okay. You know, it's like that other camping skill with a nightmare protection. And, um, yeah. It's just really, really, really good. Um, I wish I had more things, but then again, the time cost three is understandable. So it's kind of fair, I guess. Um, unlike that one camping skill, um, 
this has a higher um, chance of a monster surprise and getting the advantage is always good in the darkest dungeon so I would take advantage of stock prey and make sure that your chances of getting the first move is really really important so overall stock prey is okay soothing presence is decent this is really good for that scenario and this is just cheaply good <laughs> cheaply good I, I hope that's a thing so so there you go um, my only complaint I wish that had an extra ability um, that's it <laughs> as for trinkets um, there hasn't been really like anything interesting for the Lamia besides the one trinket that I'm using which helps her with um, blinding the enemy and stunning the enemy while giving herself um, four more points in speed sure she suffers more stress and maybe a negative 10% chance of not getting a good virtue but you know if you play your cards right you should always not be hitting the um, 100 for stress now here are the other uh, abilities that you can here are the other trinkets you can get for the Lamia you get this one where you can max out your stress heal and and healing but you lose your um, HP um, there's this one which makes your healing skills weak but your damage and crits are really good there's also the dodges there's also just stress healing and that's pretty much all I got um, overall if you want to use this character make sure you're using a um, a team that isn't position dependent if you do decide a user with a team that is position dependent um, it's gonna mess up your team composition to where characters that work well in the first row get pushed back to the second and third may have no options or one option that has nothing to do with the situation in, in hand so I recommend either a shuffling team or maybe a mark synergy team or just someone that doesn't mind getting pushed around because by the time she transforms she's going to be pushing people around just so she can get that damage so there you go overall I love the Lamia the Lamia is a really good class character and since it's a transformation character plus one in my book um, I rec I highly recommend you give her a try and um, I'll leave a link in the description so you can click the link and download this character and have all sorts of fun with this character um, I will also leave a timestamp in the video just in case you want to see the um, extra goods so, so you can see what she's like on the um, you know battlefield so with that said um this character is great uh, the modder that worked on this character also did a great job so kudos to them and um, yeah I don't know how I'm gonna end this video but I will say this um, thank you for watching this video I hope you reconsider checking out this character and I will see you in the next for class mod review the next one might be really really special it means a lot to me because I'm a huge fan of this character that came from a certain series but until then take care of yourself stay safe and I'll see you in the next one take care
body and brain. Success so clearly 